this part of the bill. Uh, Pini Henarei, Tinakwe. Mr Chair. Um, I firstly, thank, thank you to the Minister for um, his explanation uh, around this part, and I do take his point that a lot of the provisions in this part of the um, bill are around um, uh, making um, the exercise of powers uh, more clear. Um, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it gives them mana motuhake, um, but it would certainly, it certainly still um, gives them some room within um, the letter of the law of both this bill and other um, related bills or related acts, sorry, uh, that um, uh, governing bodies operate under. Sir, I want to turn um, the House's attention to clause 207, requirements if government, governance bodies sells or exchanges parcels of Māori freehold land. In particular, sir, clause 207, 2B, 2B, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. And um, I'll read it here and I'll, I'll explain my thoughts on this. Until the body complies with paragraph A, do one or both of the following. Hold the net proceeds in a separate bank account for the benefit of the owners of the land, or two, invest the net proceeds in one or more fixed term deposit products of one or more registered banks as defined by section 2.1 of the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Act 1989 for the benefit of the owners of the land. Now, um, that actually, you know, as I stare at that, as I look at that particular clause, sir, uh, makes sense so that the, the money isn't sitting there idly. I get that. I've been a part of a, uh, of a, um, a land governance body Māori land governance body where we actually do have term deposits. I understand that, sir. But my question with this particular part, sir, is it doesn't set a time frame. It doesn't set a clear time frame. Are we suggesting then that once, um, uh, as it says there, 207 requirements of government's body sells or exchanges parcels of Māori freehold land, um, that um, uh, in that exchange, um, or, or sale of the Māori freehold land, then just as a default, they can put it into a term deposit, and by virtue of the fact that it's a term deposit, they can sit on it for six months, one year. How long might that be? And does that perhaps open up too much, if you like, too much uh, leeway uh, for governing bodies to simply say, oh, well, we'll sit on that money and wait for something better, when actually that flies in contradiction to the requirements of um, these particular governance bodies in either sales or exchanges of parcel uh, of exchanges parcel of Māori freehold land or um, the uh, requirements for an allocation scheme as indicated in clause 209. So, um, like I say, a a as I stare at that particular clause, that makes a bit of sense to, uh, a bit of sense to me. Um, it reminds me of the failure for a Ngāpuhi settlement to lock away a quantum. If you lock away a quantum, you can sit on it and hope that the interest, the interest generated will just be of benefit to our people regardless. But that also has a, has a danger because it doesn't set a time frame. It doesn't set a time frame. And, and I'm scared that this particular clause isn't clear enough and actually allows governing bodies to say, oh, well, um, you know, maybe that particular didn't maybe that particular deal didn't come through, or, or well, we were actually were hoping that it didn't come through, and what we will do is we'll put this money, park it into a term deposit, uh, and in the hope that we can get some interest of it, off it. We know how term deposits work. Once that money is locked in there, it's locked in there. It's locked in there, or you pay the penalties um, if, you, if, you, if you change uh, the terms of that deposit. So I wonder, um, sir, and I ask the minister and the chair if um, there's any, if there can be any consideration on this particular clause to actually say that, well, um, it is a last resort um, to either park it in a bank account for um, beneficiaries or to place on a term deposit uh, to say that one, it is a last resort, and if that course is taken, that we can actually have a clearer time frame on it. What's to stop a governance body simply putting it on a really long-term deposit with a bank and sitting on it? What about distributing it to the shareholders? Or simply distributing it, distributing it to the shareholders? I'm going to get to that very shortly, uh, Mr. Praune. So that's the first question, is whether or not we can actually place um, a bit more restriction or a bit more guidelines on that particular part. 
Like I said, it makes good commercial, um, um, commercial decision making to me, Mr. Chair. Um, um, and and I'm, I'm not the I'm not going to rubbish that. But what we will say is that um, so that this doesn't give uh, I guess a backdoor uh, opportunity for um, governing bodies uh, to simply just park it in a uh, term deposit in the hope that they can just make money that way, when actually it's set out differently in that particular clause. The, now to the part that Mr Plowney talks about in clause 212, the application of revenues. Um, sir, uh, 212, uh, sorry, clause 2122. Two. If a government's body decides to pay owners of distribution, the body must keep a record of. Now that actually, that, those ones that it lists there, the name of each owner entitled to receive the distribution and the amount to be distributed to each owner and the date on which the distribution will be made. And that makes perfect sense to me. However, I do have one question. And the question is actually around the capacity to get that done. The capacity to get that done. We understand there's been an allocation for the Māori Land Service and the hope that we can tidy um, quite a lot of the um, unsucceeded shares, um, idle shares, inactive shareholders and beneficiaries that we can actually include them. We can hopefully update the database that um, particular um, land administration bodies do hold. But I wonder if, in fact, this um, bill and, and the minister actually understands the scale of that problem, the actual scale of that problem. We looked at one particular part on behalf of the Ngāti Hine Forestry Trust on a project to update our particular files. Per annum, per annum, sir, that was going to run us just over $100,000 to have a project manager, manager to bring that particular database up to date. And that's a serious concern that I have, sir, is simply around the capacity, because while I understand uh, um, uh, revenues, we want those to be given to our people, um, little do a lot of beneficiaries understand that for a dollar to be paid out, it almost costs that, if not more, in compliance costs on tax and administration, on tax and administration. And that's something that a lot of beneficiaries actually don't understand, that just because you've got a million dollars in the bank um, and you can uh, update your um, uh, distribution list, the um, owner's distribution list, and have it all up to date, if you've got a million dollars, you actually can't give out a million dollars. You'll only be giving, effectively, just under $500,000. The rest goes on tax and administration, sir. Um, so those are the two questions I have. One is around the capacity, sir, and the other one is around um, Clause 207 requirements of governance body sales or exchanges parcels of Māori freehold land. Uh, members, a time has come for me to report progress. Mr Speaker, the committee has considered the Te Tiri Whenua Māori Bill and reports progress. Mr Speaker, I move that the report be adopted. The question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The Te Tiri Whenua Māori Bill is set down for further consideration in committee next sitting day. Honourable Members, the House stands adjourned until 2pm tomorrow. Good evening.